Military history shows that the most disruptive systems are often operational long before they are officially acknowledged. Public confirmation usually comes after doctrine, training, and integration are already complete. This raises a provocative question that analysts quietly debate. What if the S-700 is not a future project, but a system that is already active in some form? Not fully deployed, not openly declared, but operational enough to shape behavior and planning. If that were the case, it would explain several subtle shifts in Russia's defense posture and in Western intelligence assessments. This video explores that possibility, not as speculation for drama, but as an analytical exercise in how modern military capabilities are introduced and concealed. If the S-700 were already operational, the first clue would not be a missile launch or a parade, but changes in behavior. Analysts would look for altered airspace management, new testing patterns, and revised command structures. Over the past few years, Russia has shown increased emphasis on integrated air and space defense coordination. That alone does not confirm a new system, but it aligns with what a higher level architecture would require. Systems like the S-700 would not replace existing platforms but sit above them, quietly managing information flow and engagement priorities. The transition from the S-500 to a potential S-700 would likely begin with software and command logic rather than hardware. The S-500 already provided a powerful interception layer, but its real value was the data it generated. Years of tracking high-altitude objects, test launches, and foreign aircraft behavior would feed into a next-generation system. If the S-700 is operational, it may already be processing this data continuously, learning patterns and refining predictive models without ever revealing its presence. One of the strongest indicators of early operational status would be sensor behavior. Analysts would expect to see more persistent and wide-area tracking, even in situations where no engagement occurs. Reports of unusual radar activity, extended tracking ranges, or unexplained detection events could point toward a new sensor fusion layer. An operational S-700 would not need to engage targets to prove its value. Simply observing and cataloging behavior would already justify its existence. Artificial intelligence would play a central role if the system were active. Unlike earlier systems that relied on operators to interpret data, an operational S-700 would likely automate much of the analytical process. Threat evaluation, trajectory prediction, and prioritization could be running continuously in the background. This would allow Russia to build a detailed understanding of foreign air operations over time. The longer such a system operates quietly, the more valuable it becomes. Another clue would be changes in training and command structure. If the S-700 exists, personnel would need to be trained differently. Operators would shift from direct control to supervision of automated processes. Decision-making authority might move upward, with the system providing strategic level recommendations rather than tactical alerts. These changes would not be visible publicly, but intelligence agencies would look for them through exercises and internal reorganizations. Manufacturing patterns also offer insight. A system like the S-700 would not require immediate mass production to be operational. Initial capability could rely on limited numbers of sensors, command nodes, or interceptors. Analysts might see increased investment in automation, modular construction, and advanced materials without a clear public explanation. This kind of industrial activity often precedes formal announcements by years. If operational, the S-700 would likely focus first on range and awareness rather than interception volume. Early deployment would emphasize detection depth and tracking persistence. This allows planners to test the system under real-world conditions without risking escalation. Extended range would give Russia more time to analyze air operations, pushing adversaries into more conservative planning even if they are unaware of the system's existence. Power, in this context, would not be about dramatic demonstrations. It would be about reliability. An operational S-700 would prioritize stable performance, energy efficiency, and system endurance. Missiles, if part of the system at this stage, would be tested quietly and sparingly. The real power would lie in the system's ability to remain active continuously without drawing attention. Resilience would be another focus of early operational use. Analysts would expect a distributed architecture with no single point of failure. This allows the system to be tested under various conditions without risking exposure. 
Redundancy and autonomous recovery would be essential. If the S-700 is already operational, it is likely designed to survive partial degradation without obvious signs. Integration with existing systems would also suggest operational status. The S-700 would not operate in isolation. It would quietly receive data from S-500 units, early warning radars, and possibly space-based sensors. This integration could already be influencing how engagements are prioritized, even if the S-700 itself never appears on an order of battle. From a strategic perspective, the most important question is impact. If the S-700 is operational, its influence may already be felt. Subtle changes in flight paths, increased caution in reconnaissance missions, or revised deployment patterns could all reflect growing uncertainty. Deterrence does not require visibility. It requires doubt. Western intelligence agencies are particularly sensitive to systems that alter decision timelines. If planners must assume that detection occurs earlier than expected, they are forced to adapt. This adaptation consumes resources and time. An operational S-700, even in limited form, would already be achieving strategic objectives by shaping behavior rather than engaging targets. It is also important to consider why secrecy would be maintained. Public acknowledgement invites countermeasures. Quiet operation allows a system to mature, gather data, and refine performance before adversaries can respond. History shows that many advanced systems remain classified well into their operational life. Silence is often a deliberate choice. Of course, the possibility that the S-700 is already operational does not mean it is fully deployed or perfected. Early operational capability often exists alongside ongoing development. The system could be limited in scope, geography, or function. But even limited capability can have outsized strategic impact if it affects planning assumptions. Ultimately, the question is not whether the S-700 has been officially revealed, but whether the direction of development suggests early use. The evolution from S-500 to S-700 follows a logical trajectory. More awareness, deeper automation, broader integration, and greater control over time and space. These are not features that require public validation to be effective. If the S-700 is already operational, it represents a shift in how military power is introduced. Capability would precede acknowledgement. Influence would precede confrontation. And by the time the system is openly discussed, its most valuable advantage, surprise, may already have been spent. In modern warfare, that quiet phase is often the most decisive. Share your thoughts below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and join us next time as we explore more of the world's most advanced military technologies.